I want to talk about this water bottle that I've been referring to in the lead up to this. And it is a good analogy for stress because if we can understand how we act under stress and because it, it really speaks to our trigger response in a lot of cases. Now, conversely, we can be triggered for happiness and joy, absolutely. But in this context, I'm talking about those negative emotions, the, the negative interactions, the, the days that just don't get better after somebody cut you off in traffic or whatever that is when we could drive, remember that? So I'm holding here a water bottle. Now, if you picture the water bottle, um, it is the, the entirety of the water bottle involves our capacity to perform a task. Now, let's say that it's full of water, or at least three quarters full of water, let's say. So we start to introduce dirt into the water bottle here. So the water, the dirt goes into the water and that dirt is representative of stress. Now that stress can be um, uh, operational. So maybe it's job related, something like, uh, financial, imp or, uh, uh, it, it's somebody really ticking you off in the moment. It's, uh, you know, a particular interaction or just uh, no clarity from your boss, whatever that looks like. Okay. So that's kind of operational or job related stress, but the dirt also is representative of what we call background stress. So background stress is what we've been experienced. I would submit to you over the past year or so. And those are all of the things that really you can't put a finger on specifically. It's not an acute issue. It's not a specific issue or incident or interaction. It is just this cacophony and, 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 and just a, a blob of negativity and anxiety. And I've, again, I've called it low grade anxiety. So that starts to go into the bottle as well. So as we continue to experience stress, whether it be the, the operational or job related or background stress, all of that dirt goes into the water bottle and that dirt starts to rise in the bottle and therefore it starts to diminish or um, decrease our ability to perform, our capacity to perform. Because now there's starting to get more dirt in the water bottle and less water, for example. So now what starts to happen is we get this dirt going into it. And then a couple things, one of which, like I said, our capacity to perform starts to decrease. But let's say that something triggers us. We have an interaction, whatever that might be. So I am talking to a teammate and somebody that I support and they haven't maybe got information to you on time. Well, this is what starts to happen is there's just a little shakeup now that happens. And that dirt that was previously at the bottom of the water bottle now goes up into the water and clouds it. It clouds that water. So there's no longer clarity around it. There's no longer uh, rational thinking, for example. So that's all well and fine as long as it's not our default, right? So this, but because after time that that dirt should, should subside and no longer cloud the water and your clarity is back. Well, there's a few things to that that we'll talk about towards the end. Now, if we continue to allow stress in, we pour more dirt in, a couple things happen. One, our capacity to perform gets even more diminished and it takes even less for us to get triggered and cloud that water. Now, I am a huge advocate that if we handle stress better in the moment, we will have better long-term results in terms of stress management moving forward. And what I mean by that is we'll have less um, chronic issues around our immune system. We will have less digestive issues. Our body is not designed to be running at stressful levels for a prolonged period of time. Now, when I talk about that, that little shakeup, Oftentimes what it's associated with is what's called an amygdala hijack. In simple terms, our amygdala is like our, our alarm. It's our smoke detector in our brain. And it is designed and it does its job really, really well to warn us. It is there to evaluate risk and, and, and reward and danger and all that stuff. It, it's the canary in the coal mine. 
What's unique about the amygdala, unlike any other kind of part of our brain, is it is very well connected, very well connected to all of our senses. So it is wired directly into our optic nerve. It is wired into our, our olfactory system, our auditory system, our, our, our kinesthetic, all of that. Those inputs, while from all those senses, while they do go back into certain parts of the brain, the amygdala has its hooks into the um, into all of those parts of the brain too. But it actually has kind of like a side road, and so as a stimulus comes in, it does go through the amygdala. It gets evaluated in terms of is this thing dangerous or not. Now, if the amygdala, for example, detects some sort of a danger. It sends off the alarms and those alarms enact or, or invoke physiological, neurological, biological, hormonal, whatever chemical uh, responses in our body. One of the ones that it does is it dumps adrenaline into our system. Now, adrenaline is responsible for uh, our, our um, it will increase our heart rate. It will dilate our pupils. It will start to enact certain things around our blood flow, uh, all sorts of things like that. In addition to cortisol and all uh, just a, a cocktail of, of hormones and chemicals get dumped into our system. And that really is all about fight or flight or freeze. We've, we've heard of that fight, flight or freeze. And that is because the amygdala says there's some sort of a danger in place here. So, in our water bottle analogy, what happens there is the amygdala hijack happens, the water gets shaken, dirt starts to cloud, and we no longer have the clarity that we need to do complex or even sometimes simple functions. Because the other part of this thing is our higher brain front functions, our prefrontal cortex starts getting ignored. Because in a survival situation, it's not about the square root of 64, or if I do this, then that, it's about survival. It's 